exactly five please turn on the cam yes yes, yes. Amrita Vishwa Vidya Peetham is one of India's premier top ranked universities which focuses on transforming lives through learning research and innovation the university was established 19 years ago in the year 2003 and has made significant achievements in a short time education for life education for living Amrita University is guided by the thoughtfulness of our chancellor Amma who laid down the philosophy of education for life by placing equal stress on education for a living it is this vision that led to the establishment of a vast network of educational institutions that provide modern education while imparting the traditional values while the pursuit of academic excellence forms the core of amrita's success it also undertakes the responsibility to shape the whole character of youngsters with love care and compassion the university is headquartered at the foothills of the western ghats in coimbatore tamil nadu and has five other campuses spread across south india in amrithapuri kerala kochi kerala Bengaluru Karnataka Chennai Tamil Nadu and Mysore Karnataka the university will soon launch its new campuses in Amravati Andhra Pradesh Faridabad Delhi NCR our inspiration a renowned humanitarian leader and spiritual leader amma is the chancellor and guiding light of amrita vishwa vidyapeetham amma's concept of education stress on research and commitment to instilling universal values have come together to shape amrita into an institution with the latest achievements and discoveries combined with compassion and service mindedness as amma said in 2010 when the state university of new york presented her with an honorary doctorate in humane letters rankings The multi-campus, multidisciplinary research establishment is ranked as fifth best university in India 2021 by National Institutional Ranking Framework (NIRF). We have also been accorded the status of Institute of Eminence (IOE) by the Ministry of Education, Government of India. A testament to our pursuit of excellence is the NAC A++ accreditation score, the highest possible. NAC accreditation measures universities for excellence in curricular aspects, teaching, learning and evaluation, research, innovations and extension, infrastructure and learning resources, student support and progression, governance, leadership and management institutional values and best practices global impact and international collaborations among the private educational institutions in the country amrita has entered into mous and collaborations with more than 450 leading universities around the globe students also benefit from our relations with industries and interactions with top management of multinational companies these collaborations facilitate student exchange programs student visits industrial training and project guidance under reputed corporate entities placements placements at amrita have always been best in class with students usually having more than one job offer Some students have up to 3 job offers by the end of their course from reputed MNCs be it engineering management life sciences arts or sciences Amrita is a place where the world's best companies look for talent more than 200 companies visit the campus every year and the average salary offered to our students is 5.8 lakh per annum meanwhile 
The highest package offered is 56.95 lakh per annum and the highest stipend for internship is rupees 80,000 per month. Amritas Technology Business Incubator, TBI, is a non-profit supported by the Government of India that funds, mentors and nurtures ideas by startups and entrepreneurs. It focuses on developing innovations in the areas of information technology, cybersecurity, networking, social media and more. The TBI startups have obtained multiple awards and recognition both from India and across the globe. Till date, TBI has incubated more than 75 startups and mentored 216 startup ideas with 0% loss from investments. It funds up to 1 crore rupees per startup and has opened up many more funding options through its partnership with venture capital firms and angel investor networks. Amrita TBI is one of the only six incubators selected to be world-class under Nidhi Ayog's Atal Innovation Mission. Campus Life A home away from home. At Amrita, we believe in a holistic approach towards our students' development. To augment students' classroom learning, all campuses provide students with digital and central libraries, quiet study centers, seminar halls, e-learning studios, computer labs, and campus-wide free Wi-Fi. The university encourages both indoor and outdoor sports and games, and there are world-class swimming pools, gymnasiums, stadiums, and games arenas. Various clubs cater to the artistic and scientific minds of the students. If you look around all of Amrita's campuses, you will see the prevailing educational environment is in communion with nature. The sand, the seas and the sky define the backdrop of these temples of learning. It vibrates with an energy of togetherness and encourages us to live in harmony with everything around us, including a unity within ourselves. This setting is suited to instill both learners and the learned with the courage and wisdom to face the challenges of life. The campus at Etimani is considered India's most picturesque. It is like an oasis in a desert. What started out as a barren landscape underwent a miraculous transformation through the university's tree planting project. Today, there are more than 1 lakh trees growing there, the most extensive collection in number and species on a university campus in South India. The Live in Labs program originated from Amma's idea to bridge the rural and urban divide by sending university students to remote villages in India to understand the everyday difficulties faced by people living there. The program is designed to be a multidisciplinary real-life learning experience offered to both international participants and Amrita University's faculty and students. The lab's objective is to expose youths to day-to-day -day problems faced in rural communities with a two-week to six-month periods of live-in internships in Indian villages. It also aims to inspire them to dedicate the knowledge and skills they acquired at university to help develop practical, cost-effective solutions to the challenges faced by the villages. Researchers at Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam partner with senior scientists at world's leading research universities to innovate new ideas and invent new products 
applying existing technology towards solving some of the world's most pressing problems from disaster management to assuring access to education and the management and cure of diseases. This effort reflects in Amrita's national and international research rankings. India's first UNESCO Chair on Women's Empowerment and Gender Equality Empowerment through Innovation and Technology The Center for Women Empowerment and Gender Equality is a research-focused academic center for promoting gender equality and fostering women's empowerment with a special focus on using technology and other innovative methods. This center will offer diverse courses in key focus areas, pilot radical ideas, and collaborate with leading universities and institutions. Very good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Saturday series. Today's topic is about optimum optical signal processing. The presentation emphasizes the understanding about the mystery of human eye and its function towards the vision. After the session, we will be enlightened on understanding the phenomenal operation of human eye, optical sensation of human eye, mechanical capturing of retinal image, and also identifying glucomia, a retinal disorder by image processing. Well, today we have a faculty from Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pidam, Dr. Murgaras K, who is currently serving as a assistant professor in physics, Department of Sciences from the School of Engineering, Coimbatore. So before getting into the section, if any of the participants have any queries, please type it in the chat box. Sir, I welcome you to the section, sir. Uh, therefore, we can start the series. Thank you. Hello. 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 Yeah, yes. you can start the session. Right? Okay. Good evening, Roman Dal here. Nice to see you all in our virtual platform. By the way, I have Murugadas. Um, the greeting from Amitta. And uh, we are doing the basic research in optical and instrumentation. In fact, we are focusing on eye optics and uh, related uh, uh, work. Uh, I'll give a brief presentation, a small uh, overview of the functioning of eye and eye-related uh, diagnostic techniques from an excel. So let us start our uh, presentation here. So this completely, the, the talk deals about the following uh, five aspects. Uh, it is, uh, let us see how the human eye functions, what is the structure, and second, what is its important part, and uh, we will let us discuss about one small part of the human eye and how it's significant uh, uh, in uh, vision and vision related uh, phenomena. And uh, let us address some of the retinal, some of the eye disorder, which is called a glaucoma, based by a uh, bunch of people across the world, the glaucoma is the common disease identified among all the age groups. That is the reason this uh, talk emphasizes on uh, what is uh, how we are supposed to aware of glaucoma and what uh, what is exactly glaucoma, how to diagnose, uh, etc. So this, this is the, uh, the significant uh, part of our talk. And how to image the uh, uh, retina. And 
uh, what is the significant, what information it conveys to the physicist in, in terms of engineering aspect and basic processing of image before supplying to the physician or doctor, what are the primary work to be done after capturing image and um, uh, before delivering to the, the skilled uh, person and what information, how precisely you can convey the information uh, to the uh, physician is what the whole idea of the talk. So let us give a brief idea about uh, human eye. In fact, this is uh, known to you all. You could have studied uh, in your uh, lower level what is eye, how it's structured, what is significance, etc. Let me brief out what exactly is that in a systematic way. Uh, in a human eye, it's extremely complex system and is a gift by God. Uh, you can appreciate at the end of the talk. In fact, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you very. Uh, uh, so, so some important part, not the entire uh, uh, part of the human eye. We are not going into the biological aspect of the uh, human eye and we are looking at the physical perspective. That's what our intention is. So it's generally the, the outer side of the retina, outer uh, region of the eye which we are seeing is called cornea. This is this region. So that this is the region which we are seeing and uh, projected out the rest of the eye, uh, the eye, complete eyeball is hidden inside the human body. So this region is we can't call, we, we call it as uh, um, <clears throat> okay. so this is the front front region of the front post of the human eye which is called simply uh, the, in fact uh, cornea then followed by a, some, some liquid fluid is uh, present inside, which is called vitreous humor and the iris. Iris is the one which control light to enter into the uh, eye and followed by a lens system, one, one simple lens. I'll tell you the some parts uh, of And followed by a lens, there is a, a complete fluid, which is called vitreous fluid. And behind the region, inner surface, complete on the rear surface of the eyeball, when you look at this region, you can see the yellow shaded region, which is called retina. And in fact, uh, exactly opposite the human eye, there is something called macula. You can see the macula region is uh, one of the significant region uh, in the retina. We will we'll discuss what it exactly is. Right? The adjacent to the macular region, there is another. Uh, which you can see there is a discontinuity in the retina. In fact, this is uh, actually discontinuous. This is the place where the sensation will not happen, except this region, entire uh, region will sense the light. So this region, which connect an uh, opening, it is like a tube. And this uh, through this tube, entire uh, nerves, veins, optical fiber, everything will be transported to the, uh, will connect the brain, where uh, it is uh, essentially used to transport the signal to the brain. So the region we are seeing the, the bottom side is depicted as a conventional eye, which is called the uh, cornea. This region is called cornea, which is a uh, transparent region, which allows the light to pass through that. Iris is the one which controls the light because um, uh, let me explain what exactly the some simple idea about the retinal uh, The once they enter into the corneal region, the iris is the one which controls the light because the right light is sensed by uh, some component present inside the retina. Retina is actually a 0.4 millimeter thickness. It's extremely small. The thick about in 0.4 uh, millimeter uh, thickness is divided into multiple segments and layers. Around 10 layers are present. Each layer consists of a different component, and uh, it has a different function also. So the, what we are seeing in the front side is only just the retina, interior and then inside the retina and then the different tissue layer, as I said, the, there are multiple component present. There is something called rod and cone, which is responsible for capturing light and converting to corresponding electrical signal and transport to the brain actually. So this region, the macula is a region where the cone density is very high. Cone is the one which will sense the color as well as the intensity of light, which is used for uh, day vision. The rod is extremely sensitive for light, which is only used for uh, night vision. And the iris is the one which controls the light. Generally, the aperture of iris uh, in, in a conventional normal condition is 0.2 to 0.4 millimeter, a small gap through which light enters the human eye. So when you close the eye, the iris relaxes generally and it opens. 
are a little broader and the in the closed condition the diameter average diameter of the iris is around 0.4 to 0.8 mm so when you open immediately what our iris does is it will control the light by contracting itself and the limit the light which enters the light. this is the purpose of iris and lens is the one which converts the light and retinal act as a completely a screen is exactly like our uh, uh, photo screen in our camera and there are optical fibers like, like conventional fiber which carries light or fiber which carries the information to the brain and the, uh, the retinal is just a sensing region which sends the light and the sensed light should be transported through nerve system uh, the entire nerve system is packed in a, uh, in a jam packed tube this outer it looks like a tube and which connect the brain uh, the side so brain is like complete memory unit huge memory unit everything is recorded whatever signal which transmitted from the eye will be compared on the existing signal in the brain and identify and recognize the object that's what the that's how this vision happens so the system for vision is not only depends or not only uh, the uh, the uh, done by the eye alone eye is just a sensor and the complete uh, vision system is the eye and and connected unit in the sense first light has to enter object light from the object has to enter which is allowed by the iris and uh, controlled by lens and it should reach the retina the retina will convert the light signal into electrical signal transport to the brain and brain should recognize process the signal and recognize this all a systematic process the whole process is the call is the reason general okay now we can uh, as a whole nutshell what i would like to convey is i act as a sensor that's all light sensor is a perfect camera it's a most powerful camera in the world even uh, we cannot compare even the conventional camera because the the sensitivity of the eye is very high even it can sense around the uh, thousands of photons for example in your night uh, night vision as i said rod is responsible for night vision if some object is moving in front of you in the night extremely dark you will be able to make out the movement if it lies the light coming from the object will, will pass through your retina and pass through your eye people and reach the retina which will be converted to image you will not be able to see the color in the night because uh, uh, cones will not act because cones are not acting and uh, cones are the one which detect the color whereas rod will much more sensitive than cone to recognize the light whereas if you try to capture the movement of the object by your uh, conventional camera even high end mobile camera or whatever you might be able to do that your camera will not capture such a very uh, less intensive light so even the few photons which are coming in the extreme dark will be sensed by eye so you should understand uh, and imagine what is the power of the eye in the you can no camera in the world will can compete with uh, the sensing of the eye this was the basic outline of the optical optical perspective i have told or not convincing with biological perspective fine so this is the layer you can you can look at uh, this the the cross section view of the retina there are multiple layers as i told about 10 layers you can see some some cone kind of things are uh, uh, given in the multi color in fact this multi color uh, depiction is uh, to make you to understand it sensitive whereas rod like objects are given here in the blue color which is more sensitive that's what the iris uh, is, uh, role of iris is very important because if allows ma maximum light or the, the, the substantial light into the retina which collapses the, the uh, rods rods are extremely sensitive which, which will uh, degrade the rods generally degrades with high intensity light so that's what iris will carefully control the moment you get up from the bed the iris will contract the moment uh, the light is exposed the iris will control the light and it will limit the light uh, which is entering the eye so this what there are multiple layers of rods cones uh, receptor layer ganglia these are all uh, we are not going further but together we will we'll sense the light and uh, convert it to the corresponding electrical signal and it will transmit to the uh, optical nerve such like a wire so you can see in three dimensional view exactly behind the lens are uh, pupil we have something called macula lens here next adjacent to the optic disc the macula there is optic disc this region is absence of uh, retina where uh, it is a, like a disc the light sensors will not happen because there is a opening this is a small uh, opening through that all the nerves enter uh, to the brain this is like a tube 
So this this tube plays significant role uh, in diagnosing the, the retinal disorder. In fact, one of the disorder. Look, we see how to capture this, uh, the the disc region by two dimensional image and how to process it. This is what the basic idea. Okay, this is the dynamics of the eye. Uh, if you we could have uh, in fact thought about it when you are the eye is controlled by something called uh, uh, some a strong muscles it's called rectus. It's not like a suspended an axis, but I will do all I will be able to do all possible axis except one axis. The, 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 uh, the, the, that's like the axis passing through the, the people. In fact, uh, this whole movement is controlled by these muscles called rectus. Uh, in a sense, you can look, if, uh, look as if like a ball is packed in a bowl so that it, it, it will move complete degrees of freedom, three dimensional uh, axis, three dimensional plane, it can move any uh, angle, any, any axis it want. That's how uh, the vision will be completely uh, covered in the entire broad range. Okay. So you can look at the cross section of the eye. In fact, we will see all those things. This, this is the region where we are interested, uh, exactly opposite, not exactly opposite, adjacent to the macula, and uh, this region is called optic disc. We are going to see what is significance. Okay, this is the dynamics. In fact, I if you are, for example, if you are sitting in front of a wall and moving, if you are scanning uh, the wall from left to right, your eye is moving from left to right, implies the eyeball is rotating uh, or your uh, scanning is a horizontal. If you are uh, scanning horizontal axis, your eyeball is rotating with this axis, this axis. Obviously, if the eyeball is moving like this, it is as if like rotating with respect to vertical axis. If you are scanning the wall from top to bottom, vertical, obviously your eyeball is supposed to rotate with horizontal axis. Or if you are scanning uh, the wall the diagonal, one of the diagonal, the eyeball, eye, the eyeball is rotating with other diagonal. So these are also not only the vertical, horizontal, diagonal axis, it can rotate any axis except this axis, the axis which pass through, which connect the pupil and the, the macula. It, it, it's like a twisting, which is not required for this. Actually, so you should understand only one axis the eyeball will rotate. In fact, the can, can rotate, but this is not required for this. So that's how this, this is controlled by completely uh, uh, rectum muscles, which is packed inside uh, a bowel. Okay. So now we can think of the, we can just compare the retina as the convenience of the camera. Uh, by leaving the lens system, you can think about retina is like a completely perfect uh, screen, photosensitive screen, which sends the photon and convert it to corresponding optical signal, uh, convert it to corresponding electrical signal and transport it. The process is done in this region. This is what the multiple layer, as I told, cross sectional view of the uh, retina. This can be uh, seen, visualized by some technique called OCT, optical coherent tomography. You can see in the Google it and see the image of the tomography. That exclusively meant for uh, seeing the layers of the glaucoma, but what we are going to see is the surface of the glaucoma. Our imaging system is the surface of the glaucoma. Sur surface of the retina, sorry. Okay. See that the vision of the eye is simply like you could have studied this uh, very simple. If you, this object in front of that light from the uh, like scattered light from object will pass through the small opening, as I said, 0.2 to 0.4 millimeter uh, aperture provided by iris, and it is focused by the eye lens and falls on the retina. Retina will do further process, as I said. But uh, generally, if you look at how the lens works, this eye is like simple lens system. So simply one single lens. And single screen, like a convenient simple camera, instead of one lens and one screen. So generally, if you have one lens and one screen, you know that uh, the, if you know the object distance, distance of the object from this uh, the lens, you will be able to tell where the image is. You this is a conventional formula you could have studied. Your object distance is very if you, if you vary the screen, and accordingly for a given object, you'll be able to capture the image. But here, screen is our retina, lens is in front of the eye. So these two are fixed, screen is fixed, lens is fixed. So only the object distance is moved. Whatever, wherever the object uh, in front of your eye, which will be imaged, definitely you'll be able to see in the retina means. So what is happening? Your screen is V is fixed. And U is varying. The, how the, uh, the, the image will fall on this constant uh, screen, 
in spite of its uh, variable distance means the focal lens is supposed to be the focal lens of any conventional lens is, lens is constant whereas focal lens of the eye lens is keep varying focal lens will adjust according to the optic uh, object distance and uh, the object will be imaged uh, at the retina so the important thing which you want to understand is the focal length of the eye lens is constant not only focal length of the eye lens is constant the the, the the guiding technique is not like a conventional lens it is a graded refracted lens in the sense conventional lens refracted index is constant which is made up of single material where eye lens is not like that there are multiple layers each layer will constitute different refracted index and totally the refracted index of the eye lens varies in the entire thickness so something varies with respect to distance is called gradient so the refract index is varying with respect to distance is called gradient refract index gradient or graded refract index so that this is i lens itself is a complex system uh, there is an interesting story the uh, as a person uh, galstein who theoretically modeled the refract index and light guiding mechanism of the i lens itself in fact he is awarded nobel prize for So you think about what complex uh, the eye lens itself, and how complex the eye is. Okay. So common eye disease. So there are uh, plenty of eye diseases. Could have, uh, in fact, uh, have heard about it. But there is a refractive dis disorders where the image will not exactly fall on the retina. You will be seeing. Uh, you can see the short or long uh, vision. A power variation. In fact, everything comes in this uh, category. I am diabetic retina body, and there are many other things, cataract, and um, the, the glaucoma. There are plenty of things, age-related issues, amblyopia, etc. So here we will see glaucoma uh, is uh, some uh, something different from other diseases. So all other diseases have uh, some kind of uh, uh, treatment, but glaucoma do not have any treatment. It is irreversible. Once the glaucoma uh, is substantially uh, Uh, occurred and which is uh, not properly diagnosed so uh, the, the long duration glaucoma is there was you cannot uh, treat them and uh, it will finally end up for the it tries to the vision loss so the glaucoma is identified among almost all the age group across the globe the, there are uh, we get the, the 2002 uh, report around More than 12 percent of the total population is affected by glaucoma. Many of the people do not know that they have got glaucoma. Okay, now we see what is a glaucoma. So, as I said, that glaucoma is the one kind of disorder in the, the signal transportation. Generally, it happens in the optical nerve system. Okay, how it causes? So glaucoma is generally caused by development of pressure in the liquid, eye liquid. In the, in the lens, the, uh, this vitreous humor. This is like a the, the vitreous humor is a complete conventional liquid or uh, conventional water. The only difference between the water and uh, vitreous humor is some proteins and minerals are dispersed. So uh, the, the vitreous humor is a ninety-nine percent of water. So when our pressure develops. In the water, it will be propagated in all the uh, entire region of the retina. In fact, it, it uh, impact the optic region. This is called disc region. This is the region where the vision senses will not happen. As I said, that the uh, disc continuity. This is the region which connects the uh, canal kind of things through that nerve center. This pressure. Impact of the pressure. What happens? It compresses the optic nerves, which carries information to the eye. Which means the signal transportation is disturbed, which eventually uh, leads the uh, the blur in the vision. So the, the there are various reason for uh, development of pressure inside the vitreous. Yes, we don't bother about. Generally, this one of the major reason is a uh, the diabetic. So diabetic people often get this blur. Uh, Okay, so we don't bother about how the pressure develops. If pressure develops, then obviously uh, there will be a, a disturbance in the distortion or disturbance in the transporters of the signal, and which is to be taken care. Okay, so what happens to glaucoma? If the the long uh, long range glaucoma generally reduces the vision range. Generally, when you look at it, if something is in front of you, you can see the uh, vision around one sixty degree. 
void. But development of glaucoma water apnea is try to reduce a, a wide range of vision and becomes make it narrow, and you will be seeing as very narrow vision eventually uh, as glaucoma progresses. Uh, it will lead to uh, irreversible vision loss. Once vision is lost, it is irreversible. That's what uh, the, the, the glaucoma is very important. It should be addressed at the early stage. It should be properly diagnosed. Proper treatment to be given and periodic treatment to be given, etc. So that's what uh, the very significant aspect in our uh, okay. So this is how we can see the uh, retina uh, if you image it. It's like uh, very simple. I tell you, somebody is looking into your eye. So, say for example, you can take a big football and make a punch in it and uh, look through the punch and you'll be seeing the interior backs of the football. That's all retina is. You can so seeing as if you can imagine your eyeball. It's like a football and you look, uh, how do we image it? We have to look through the people. And if you are uh, if you are able to image the retina, this is how it looks like. So this is exactly opposite region we have addressed as a macula. This comes exactly opposite to the lens and adjacent to this is the region where this optic disc. So this is very important. Uh, this region we are uh, actually looking at. This carries the information of glaucoma. This is a marker, glaucoma marker, two uh, D image. Okay. So when you look at a retinal image, which consists of multiple nerve systems, veins, vessels, circulatory system, and plenty of things, and uh, light sensation region, etc. This region do not have any light sensation. It looks like outer ring. I have a uh, ring, but it looks like outer circle, which is called this interior white region, which is called cup region. You can see the cup region, and intermediate region between disc and the cup is called uh, the neuroretinal ring. It's called neuroretinal ring. This is a region where all the optical nerves converge and enter into the tube and which pass through there. Okay. This is where we said that the pressure will compress this region, which, which uh, eventually causes the damage of the optical nerves and uh, the signal transportation to the system. Okay. So you can see the normal image, normal retina. If you look at the optic disc of the normal retina, it looks like this. Whereas the glucomotus retina, you can look at it as if the bulge inside the tube because of the impact of pressure, it looks like this. There is some bulge you can see in the retina. Uh, How do we see in the image, 2D image, which is very important? We'll see that. Okay, this is, so this is what the uh, glucose is. This is the difference between normal uh, retina, nor retina and the optic disc region. We are talking about optics, optic disc region retina, not the whole retina. Because optic disc is very important, which carries the information as I said before. Um, okay. Yeah, so. Just a moment. Yes, hope you'll be seeing that. Okay. So this region, when we look at from the 2D camera, how does it looks like? It looks like this. This what this this this, this is how it looks like. So what is information that carries? You can compare this uh, region like our teacup, conventional teacup. If you look at say see the bottom, the teacup. If you image teacup, what does it looks like? You can see a front circle and a rear circle. But in a 2D image, this will not be seen. You can uh, see as if like a rear circle is present inside the front circle. That's what you are seeing. So the name itself is a cup. Front circle is called as a disc. So you want the outer region circle, what you are seeing is a disc. And inside, you are seeing a disc and the circle is cup. But this cup and disc are separated by distance. Like this is a kind of a tube like this, this distance. So that, that, that cannot be seen in the two dimensional image. Okay. So now what happens? This is how you can look in the conventional normal eye, whereas glucomotor's eye, it will be looking like this. What is the impact of this? As pressure uh, increases, as an impact of pressure, this cup, the, the pressure will be acting on the cup. This uh, the pressure will be acting in this side also, vertical, all the all the uh, circumference, and which makes the cup will bulge. This. So the real diameter will increase 
as pressure increases rear diameter also increases that you can see that this is here uh, you cannot see even the rear diameter here rear diameter is become bulge much much more we keep on increase bulging in both sides this diameter almost looks like this diameter that is a very worst level of glucose you can see now what happened this region the L, the white region which you are seeing is the rear side of the cup the outer region is the front side of the disc so now disc and the cup are almost very close at that of the diameter so now this compare this normal and glucomotor's uh, optic disc if you take the ratio how the, what is how do we index this we can make as a mathematical index in the sense if i if i am able to capture this circle and i am able to calculate diameter and is compare with the diameter of the outer circle of take a ratio that will give information of uh, that will give some information some index so the, uh, the the diameter ratio between the smaller circle and the bigger circle means cup and disc is called cup to disc ratio this cup to disc ratio is of the order of 0.3 to 0.4 for conventional eye normal eye whereas this cup to disc ratio increases more than 0.4 it can it, it is a indication of glaucoma why it increases because the pressure increases which uh, make the rear circle to bulge increase the diameter and uh, the numerator diameter increases obviously the value increases so that's what you see is the uh, interior circle is diffusing into the neuroretinal ring and almost moving close to the circumference of the outer ring if this happens uh, this 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 is the uh, one of the marker of glaucoma this one the glaucoma can be quantified so this number will be provided to doctor and doctor will be able to make out the intensity or the rigor of the glaucoma yes. depends on the number now question is uh, how do we provide first first what we need is first we need to image the optic disc and image has to be processed and the information should be supplied so the three, three processes are involved you will see how to uh, image so just you can look at uh, clearly so you can see the, the outer circle is depicted by the outer circle is called the disc and the cup the ratio between smaller to bigger circle is less than one obviously because numerator is smaller than uh, denominator of the error of 0.4 of 0.3 to 0.4 i said so conventionally this is how the nerve transportation happened through this hole and it will be properly uh, arranged whereas the pressure compress and the outer circle inner circle expands which will compress this optic uh, nerve system which carries information in fact the uh, signal transportation is disturbed and that's what the make the field to be narrow and finally leads to the sudden loss that's what it's so I hope you'll be able to understand what is the impact of this expansion of the rear disc due to pressure and it eventually directly compress the nerve system now this system is compressed the information is uh, distorted this is what the generally called as a whole process is called as glucom fine so our task is to provide a cup to disc ratio for doctor before that how to quantify in the sense the cup to disc ratio will tentatively tell the glaucoma this is not the only factor which will provide information there are many factors this is significant factor cup to disc ratio will tell you 70 percent tenfolds okay how easy how challenge to calculate the cup to disc ratio what is the modality which we are following uh, to do this and how to validate the result this is another topic which we are discussing so the imaging device which you could have this device you could have seen in the hospital in fact you could have experienced there is a this is a simple device which consists of uh, conventional uh, uh, lens and some processing unit that's all very simple it looks like a complicated it's simple and some electronic parts some movement all those things so it, there is a handheld device also like this it can have one screen one digital camera and one lens system and an adjustment unit that's all the entire thing rest of the parts are only to do, make a mechanical movement and uh, say the signal capturing etc this device is generally called as a fundus camera which will do the retinal image okay the the tent the schematic of the fundus camera will look at so generally i we are interested in the optic disc region generally so how do we get the retina we have to this non invasive technique we are not going for surgery kind of things etc simply you can illuminate uh, your eye if you want generally what happens is i will image the object in front of it what we are doing is we are imaging the interior part of the eye by using external camera it's a reverse process of eye that's what exactly we are doing we want the optic disc so to image what we need to do we have to pass the light 
to the optic disc, collect the scattered light through the same people, and process the light. We converge the light by using the lens, and we can capture the light by using the camera. This is what generally we do by using retinal imaging. Simple process. You can look at as if like uh, the shaded dark color arrow indicate the light which is directed towards the retina, and the, the discontinuous shaded area, uh, arrow represents the scatter light from the retina which is captured by the camera. Generally, the, when you look at the eye lens, it's a simple system. Moreover, the retina is focused, uh, kept in the focal length of the eye. If any object is kept in the focal point of the eye, uh, the, you cannot image it. The, you know, the ray emerging out from the lens will be almost parallel. Parallel ray will converge at infinity, you can get image at infinity. So generally, but if you wanted to get, that's all, when you pass the light, the retina is at the almost focal length, not exactly, but uh, roughly we say the focal length. So light scattered from the retina and emerge out from the of people will be almost like a parallel ray, you can say. Not exactly parallel ray, roughly we can say parallel ray, so which we can't simply get the image, otherwise we cannot see the object. So if this is also started giving image in front of uh, us, we will be seeing our own retina, which should not happen. <laughs> so then what we do that, uh, that is, that's how nature is designed. It will form image at infinity, which we cannot see. But if you wanted to convert the image, convert those rays and form an image in a camera, we have to put a lens. Converging lens and make it to convert somewhere here again. Diverge ray will process simply for lens system. This is a simple system. In fact, with single lens, we can capture the image. If you're keeping the camera somewhere here, we'll be able to make. And finally, fine tuned image will be captured here. You can see the retina here directly. Your camera will capture the retina. This is a simple process, but not so simple. Uh, if you pass the light directly to the eye, and what happens is there will be a superposition of the ray which you are passing a ray coming out from the retina. This will lead a uh, noise in the camera. So what happens is we have two channels. Somewhere we keep the the light source. This is a the this is a line beam. This this is always called as a beam line. It is called beam line. What it does is the light has to be processed first because light has uh, uh, the IR IR region IR light will be there. Whatever light source. Might emit light in IR region as well as the ultraviolet region, both are dangerous for the retina. Ultraviolet light directly collapses because it carries uh, huge energy. IR will make the system to vibrate, water molecule to vibrate. We have studied uh, vibration range of water molecules, IR to vibrate and generate the heat. So, those two flow right to be filtered by appropriate filter, IR and this, uh, ultraviolet will be visible light fast and which will be pre processed by using lens system, multiple system. And this is something called a beam splitter. Which means uh, when light incident on it, 50% of the light will be reflected, 50% of the light will be transmitted. So when the uh, light falls on the beam splitter, 50% of light will be passed through the retina. And the scatter light from the retina again traveled back to the same lens system and falls on the same beam splitter. But here what we do is the force on the light will be transmitted to the beam splitter. A transmitted light will be captured. So that will be in fact reflected. Reflect light will not have any usage. But transmitted light will be uh, again passed by lens system and direct to the camera. Then again, there will be another beam splitter, which means this beam splitter again, what it does is it will reflect the light. Reflected light can be directed to the camera and person can directly see through the lens also. The transmitted light will be used to see the dark. So doctor directly seeing as well as capture. Whatever he see can directly click it and capture it. There is a two channel provided for this. So this what happens is carefully isolates the the light which we which is coming from the retina and light which we are direct to the retina this is illumination and, and illuminating light and information and the and signal will not mix each other so that's how the, the this, this, this way system is designed and this will uh, work perfectly uh, uh, the imaging system in fact uh, in our research lab we are developing this device uh, and uh, not only we are almost uh, we have completed and we are developing as well as uh, not only the optical systems, we are developing software and full fledged system. We are uh, trying to do this. Okay, fine. So, once the image is recorded, the image will be captured in our digital screen. Our digital screen looks like this. What is this? This is a pixel. This is what this is how it looks. Uh, looks a pixel. Uh, in the sense, uh, hope you could have some of you could have seen pixel. 
it's a very simple process you open your uh, word sheet in your computer screen or white screen in your mobile and you simple magnifying glass look through the magnifying glass you will be seeing this bit of your screen looks like this. your computer white screen looks like uh, array of red green and blue etc so this is a pixel this is very this is a individual uh, unit optical unit in a, this the, the, through this small this uh, of the few microns which is a few microns through which light will come out and the collection of the light coming out from all the pixels is the one which we are seeing as an image this is how the image actually looks like so what is the dark region where pixels are switched off so entire all the pixels are glowing you can see the white light the color variations any color can be produced secondary color can be produced by three primary colors or rbg this is the reason for process you are studying so the how second if you want to produce uh, uh, orange you have to change the intensity of red blue green accordingly and will make the uh, color which which we want some sometimes red will switch off sometimes blue will switch off sometimes red will switch off sometimes red intensity will more than blue depends on the image okay so ultimately what i want to emphasize is what you have is the intensity what is the information about the image which is stored we have only intensity so now if you want to process any image you have to process the individual intensity of the pixel the image is a combination of pixels that's all so which pixels first we want what is the pixel value the intensity is expressed in terms of value the minimum zero intensity pixel is completely switched off it is represented as zero maximum intensity is represented by 255 this is a digital number uh, i don't want to get into that you can remember 0 to 255 is the maximum pixel intensity varies this number varies it becomes 20 or 30 or 40 depends on the intensity of the uh, uh, the light or glowing of the pixel okay so this is what called as a pixel value this number is called pixel value and which pixel what is the value that is what we need to capture up for any image process so if i wanted to make this pixel for to identify this pixel this pixel is for example 1 2 3 4 5th row and some uh, sixth column this is fifth row sixth column like x y coordinate so this pixel is fifth row of eighth column so we can i have pixel value and we can have pixel coordinate to represent the pixel in the matrix and the value of it so these are the two major things we have we have to locate the pixel by coordinate and we need to see what is the value so by using this to parameter we will be able to image the we will be able to do all process okay. see that this is the image so what we wanted to do is we wanted to measure the diameter of the cup and disk and ratio that is what exactly we wanted what is the process involved so first let us take the image like this and blur it why do we blur it because if you look at the, the there is a uh, sharp nerves veins etc this colors are different intensity is drastically varying so pixel which are uh, falling in this region will have a highest value so as this pixel is lowest value this pixel all the rbg will be highest value white pixel because white means all the pixel will be glowing maximum intensity so this red if you look at the red region red pixel will be glowing uh, the high intensity green and uh, blue will be so pixel value will be different at different value that's how we can see the intensity varies image is certified pixel value variation with respect to pixel uh, locations that's all you should understand so what you want to do is i want it to extract information of this alone so first let me convert to gray scale rather than using with the complex the color image and i'm trying to blur this image like this this image will be converted into this why do we do that what is the difference between this and this now this uh, Nerves are sudden variation of uh, sharp variation, sudden variation of uh, light. Or, or the intensities are gone. It's not present here. There is something called Gaussian smoothening. It is like uh, this type of matrix. This this number is generated. Box is generated by some equation. I am not completely. I am not uh, using any mathematics. I am just uh, discussing about the result. There is a deep mathematical process into that, which I am not getting into. so this will be simply like a moving along the row by row and column by column and there is some process which will redistribute the intensity change the intensity value as it moves move along this row and column and smoothen the intensity value finally it becomes like this 
This is called gas in smoothing. You can go through internet and see how the gas in smoothing is functioning. This is called this is one of the standard algorithm technique which we are using. Smoothing the image. So what is the advantage? This has got only two part two clusters. So when I do clustering, I can extract two parts. One is this part and outer part. So if I plot the pixel values versus the uh, number of pixels, it just got those values. It looks like this. So this white region. Almost equal pair, uh, the highest pixel value is white region. In fact, in this image is concerned, that's how we smooth them. So this pixel will be falling around somewhere here, the sharp line. Almost all the pixels are the same value, around 75. You can see this pixel value 75. As I said, 0 to 250 by scale will be 75. And outer region, this region is a little blur compared to this. This will be lesser uh, pixel value. So it will, it will be around 45 uh, to some region. So there are two clusters only. So I can ex perfectly extract this information. If I catch hold of all the pixels in this line, which will give you the, the region of the disk alone, this complete region. So that alone I can, uh, I can uh, take it out and process it. I don't want to process the entire image. So this is called region of interest. See that? This image is converted into this form. I carefully extracted this image alone, this region. So why we do this? This image is simple to process and reduce the computational burden. And unnecessary timing is not required. It, it will be very fast processing. So this, so instead of using entire image, you can use a region of interest. Back starting some process. Okay. See that from this, how do we extract outer retinal, outer uh, boundary, outer circle, and inner circle? We have to separately extract out. Let us see how to extract the outer circle. When you look at the image, this called disk localization. I will, I want localize only this. So this local region of interest consists of red in color. You can see red pigment. This region, red pig pigments are more. This region, you can see white. White means consists of uh, blue pixels, red pixels, and uh, green pixels. So I wanted to make entire things. I want to completely diffuse this region. So it means when I switch off the green and blue pixel, I can see only red in color. Entire color, red in color. So you can see like this. Which means this the boundary is gone now. I can perfectly extract the cup information. Okay. So this region can stuff uh, red and blue, and in fact, green, green and blue is gone. So obviously, you can see the red in color. This, red, this image is called cyan filtered red image. Means blue and green is commonly called a cyan image. Cyan is filtered out, remaining we have a red image. So this is a grayscale image. Grayscale is a black and white image. You can see that. Now again, I'm clustering this black and white image. If I cluster the black and white image, again, this region will be highest pixel value, which is forming the highest uh, region, highest scale, and other pixel background will be like this. In fact, this will be more uh, darker than this pixel value of this mouse will be very uh, less compared to the background, but still that, that's how you get a broad, broad line here. But I want only this region, this line, if I catch hold of all the pixel in this line, and the average pixel value is given redistributed it looks like this. And what we want to do is, I will I know this pixels correspond to this region, the graph itself, pixel uh, coordinate I know. Only those coordinate pixel coordinates are activated and deactivate the background, it looks like this. This is completely deactivated. Except pixel in this region, all other pixel images deactivated, you will be able to get complete uh, disk region. Okay, this is this intensity is zero. This intensity is now 255, 250 in fact. So now we got the complete uh, outer boundary of the disk. So now we can fit the circle, and I'll be able to take the uh, circumference of circle and diameter. So my uh, cup diameter, this disk diameter is ready. Okay, how do we process the cup? Is that again? So here, what I'm doing is this outer region consists of, as I said. Uh, the white pigments, this is due to circulatory systems and many other things. If I filter the red region, what I can see is I can completely get rid of this uh, circulatory system, the, the pigments due to circulatory systems, all the red color will be completely gone. Red color, the white region will be completely gone. So I can get like this. This is a cyan, red filtered cyan image. Now image is in cyan, red is filtered out. So if I convert a grayscale image, I'll be able to see like this. So means what is the advantage? You can see the cup region, white, perfect white region is 
isolated from the outer uh, ring as well as you can see the inbuilt intermediate region called the neuroretinal ring. So you can have perfect boundary between cup and neuroretinal ring and disc and outer retinal region. Again, I'm doing clustering process. There are three clusters here. One is outer retinal region, which falls here, and this region, the neuroretinal ring, will create more little more in, more pixel value than this that falls here, and complete white region. This whatever white pixels are here, which falls in the highest pixel value, 100 to 125 or uh, one part. So if you catch hold of these pixel alone and give a uniform brightness, it looks like this. You can see perfectly the uh, isolated region of the cup. What I'm doing is I'm catching hold of this pixel alone from this region and switching off all other pixel leads like this. So now we can ex perfectly extract the information of the cup. So this can be fitted to a circle and we will get the diameter of the circle, the circumference of the cup, etc. Now our cup uh, diameter is ready, disk diameter is ready, and cup to disk ratio we can uh, essentially calculate. If cup to disk ratio goes more than 0.4, we can say that the indication of the Less than uh, 0.4, it can say the convention. So this is this is a very simple process. Uh, I've, I've told the bare minimum. There are a lot of complications in that. For example, if any region exhibits, for example, for uh, elder people, very old people, what happens is there will be a, a deposit of some protein layers in the retina, which blocks the vision. In fact, this is called exudate. Such protein deposits and exudate exist, which also looks like a bright in color, like converts like a um, Optic disk, exactly like optic disk. You can see as if two optic disks exist. Then computer uh, our computation technique will be confused, which is the optic disk out extracted. So how to get rid of those exhibit and all the challenging. That's what I address. What is challenge? Those challenges are not addressed here. I have told a very simple technique of uh, cup disk isolation, but there are other techniques which we used to do. Uh, I have not addressed this. Okay, these are some of the images we have done, and uh, the, we have tested around thousands, more than thousands of glaucoma. Images and now normal images for the algorithm which we have developed uh, to identify cup to disk ratio. And all those images you can see the perfectly it's isolated. This uh, you can see the this magnified um, region of interest. You can see the outer boundary and uh, inner boundary also. You can see like this. This image is also perfectly extracted. Like even some fluctuations are some exhibits are there which can be perfectly extracted. And this region you can look at this boundary. This is how the cup is spread across. Cup is in, that, in fact is occulted in the now system. So you can't see the complete uh, cup through the camera. There is uh, it is discontinuous because the the nose blocks the cup region. So that's how we can see the image that is discontinued circle and uh, the cup is so perfectly you can extract the cup information, cup boundary from this this technique. So by, by using this technique and in fact, we have a lot of uh, other algorithms which were combined to increase the precision of detection and uh, we have perfectly quantified the, the images, uh, uh, many, many, multiple images and validated with the result of the hospitals, etc. And you see that there are uh, discontinuous, uh, there are uh, different type of uh, optic disk. So everything is perfectly identical. Okay, this is the, the, we have in fact done the image also. Uh, I think I uh, skipped this technique because it is out of our boundary. This is we, we have first in the beginning, the last very infant stage, five years before we have done this. We have also some simple um, pipes and some simple lens. We have a lens inside this thermocol. And this is what our device, retinal imaging. This device has given such a fantastic written image. This is then with the help, you don't write these like this because. The, the lens system which we are using is completely different and uh, this is done with the help of uh, nearby eye hospitals. We have collaboration with the doctors and uh, with the help of doctors we have done and we have done the image processing and we are developing devices. Also. So there are problems like you can see the reflex in some small spots like those reflecting spots because we have used same, there is no separate beam line and uh, signal line. We have used same but if you use the beam line, this is an infant stage and we will, later we have developed a device. Uh, this is what exactly we are working on, and our uh, you see there are three D images. In fact, we provide not only cup to disk and uh, light information. We used to provide three D image. Three D image. What it does is it will directly visualize the 
the the bulge region of the optic disc to the doctor. So we can take a we, we cannot three D image is uh, very difficult in the sense we we produce two two the three D image from two two D images. This is like our conventional three D movie you could have seen in a in a cinema theater where how they how do they do that? Uh, every movie you know, there are movie or image whatever we need at least two pair of images. Objects objects to be made at two different angle and those two images uh, will be pre-processed like that filter sign filter other thing. And blend together, and uh, it forms a single image. Then, if you look this image through a polarized polarized glass, you can see the depth information. As I said, cup uh, front uh, side of the cup and rear side of the cup, you will not be able to see. If you look at two images, see as if in a single circle, one circle inside that. The depth information you cannot see. But whereas in the three D image, you will be able to see the depth information. How the nerves are compressed, how the projection compression and uh, the distance of the nerves. And all those things, you somehow, to some, some great extent, you will be able to visualize the physics. That's the advantage of the uh, 3D image. These are the, some of the camera which we use. Uh, this autofocus camera, in fact, focusing will be free. Uh, we don't want to uh, struggle a lot to focus. And this is how the, this device is available in the market. They provide like a 2D image, a written image, computer ratio, and computer reconstructed. Uh, image. This why we do that is actually this device already available in hospital, but not manufactured in India. This almost all the hospitals are imported. The purpose of this project is so this is like a self-sustained uh, uh, diagnostic systems. We are moving to self-sustained diagnostic system, which means we we continuously develops and manufacture. The device and provide to the cater to the hospital in India. That's what the ultimate aim of the project, and this is what the the basic idea. And we are trying to develop the device, develop the software, and compile and completely full fledged a fundus camera to the angioscopic standard will be evolved and uh, and uh, and uh, this will be delivered. This is what the ultimate aim of the project actually we are doing. So this we have taken this as a standard and we are trying to. Uh, uh, develop our own technique. Uh, the, the image which we provide is the most competence to the, the the image provided with commercial device available in the market. So see that this is this image that so this is the image they provide. This is called computer reconstructed 3D image. It looks like this. This image provided by the the this this company, non-made company, which is available one of the pioneer uh, camera available in the market. So the other image, what we have developed is much better than this either. This is uh, the, you can see as to like the compressed region of the optic disc and the interior bulging part also you can visualize. This is 3D image and uh, uh, written image, uh, almost all the images I've shown is taken from our uh, And um, uh, this work is funded by Department of Science and Technology, Government of India. And with that, we have started this lab and started uh, doing this work. And we have uh, reached the uh, 80% of the work. And um, we have reached some, some standard extent. So, this is the this is some simple. So, so one, one of the simple work which we have done is discussed here. Uh, if you have any any doubt, anything related to the, the physical aspect of the eye, you are not a biologist, you can uh, contact me or mail anytime and I'm ready to answer. I'm, I'm eager to interact with you all. Okay. Thank you. If you have any queries or any anything, please feel free to interact. Sir, so far, uh, no questions are available. Sir, uh, that was a fantastic course, uh, seminar uh, webinar on the optics. Uh, sir, thank you so much for this section. Uh, let's call it a day. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir.